You don't move, your head is going to piss me off. You're Alfred, right? That's right, sir. Any psychotic ex-boyfriends I should be aware of? Oh, you have no idea. Are you telling me another one of your bio-force experiments has gone here, Wyatt? There's only one thing that can fight that. It's in me. <laughs> Hi new fans of movies, and welcome to Spidey's Movie Madness. One full week of movie reviews leading up to the granddaddy of them all, The Dark Knight. So let's start with the first movie in the lineup, The Incredible Hulk. Starring Edward Norton, Liv Tyler, William Hurt, and Tim Roth. At first, I wasn't too stoked about seeing this movie after Ang Lee's raping of the first Hulk movie back in 2003. But, when I heard that Edward Norton was playing Bruce Banner, I automatically decided to give this movie a chance. After Norton's performance in An American History X, he's won my respect in movies that he's in, and without a shadow of a doubt, he starred in yet another great movie. In my opinion, the reason that the first Hulk movie failed was due to its lack of action and too much drama. I just felt that there was way too much focus on Banner's conflict and pain that the movie just seemed to touch on that and nothing else really. It was almost as if the Hulk didn't exist in the movie The Hulk. But all those issues were taken care of with this movie. The movie starts out in a refreshing manner by telling the origins during the starting credits and then starting the movie well into its story. This allows more time to tell a new story rather than wasting too much time on his origins. And face it, we all know how Bruce Banner became the Hulk and the last movie was about 5 years ago so it's not like we all forgot his origin. And it was a nice and quick way to get that out of the way and get the movie rolling. The pace of the movie is great and never lets down or slows down for that matter. They also managed to fit in all the action we want along with conflict, turmoil, and love without slowing the pace down which plagues many comic book movies like Spider-Man and X-Men. Cast in the movie is great as well, and Norton actually makes you care about Bruce Banner, which makes the audience care about Banner and his struggle rather than waiting for him to turn into the Hulk and only looking forward to that. Scenes with the Hulk are also a treat as they completely revamped his image like in the start of the movie when Banner hulks out. The movie used the classic monster in the smoke and darkness technique, which I felt made the Hulk seem scary and more intimidating. The use of CGI in the film is also great, but not anything to stand up about. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't bad and I thought the Hulk and the Abomination looked great, but it could have been done better since I was expecting CGI in the caliber of Spider-Man or Final Fantasy Advent Children, but this suits the movie good as well. The movie not only keeps true to the comics, but to the old show as well since it's very reminiscing of it. One could even argue that it's an up-to-date film version of the classic show, and I can see that. In the end, this movie made up for the crap that was the first Hulk movie and is everything you want from a Hulk movie and nothing you don't want. Yes, that's all I got. The Incredible Hulk gets a 9 out of 10.